we are given an infinite sequence of positive integers, a1, a2, and so on. Each term must have at least three proper divisors. The rule connecting the terms is that a n plus 1 is the sum of the three largest proper divisors of a n. The problem asks for all possible values of the first term, a1. The first step is to find a more useful expression for the sum of the three largest proper divisors. This sum can be related to the smallest divisors of a number. For a positive integer n, let its divisors be ordered from smallest to largest, d1, which is 1, d2, and so on, up to d on k, which is n itself. The proper divisors are all divisors of an except for n itself. In our ordered list, this corresponds to d1 through dk minus 1. There is a direct relationship between the largest and smallest divisors. The largest proper divisor is n divided by its smallest divisor greater than 1, d2. The next largest is n over d3, and so on. This relationship allows us to express the three largest proper divisors using the three smallest divisors greater than 1. Applying this to our sequence, we can write the recurrence relation. a n plus 1 is the sum of a n over d2, a n over d3, and a n over d4, where these d's are the three smallest divisors of a n greater than 1. Factoring out a n gives a clearer form. a n plus 1 equals a n times the quantity 1 over d, 2 plus 1 over d, 3 plus 1 over d4. The behavior of the sequence depends entirely on this factor in the parentheses. The requirement that the sequence is infinite is the central constraint of the problem. We will now analyze what this implies for the multiplicative factor we just found. Let's define s and as the sum 1 over d, 2 plus 1 over d, 3 plus 1 over d, 4, where the d's are divisors of a n. The sequence grows if s n is greater than 1, shrinks if it is less than 1, and remains constant if it equals 1. First, consider the case where s n is less than 1. This implies that a n plus 1 is strictly less than a n. A strictly decreasing sequence of positive integers must eventually terminate. This contradicts the condition that the sequence is infinite. Therefore, it is not possible for s n to be less than 1 for all large n. Next, consider the case where s n is greater than 1. Here, the sequence is strictly increasing. Let's determine for which sets of divisors s n can be greater than 1. This occurs only when the divisors d2, d3, and d4 are very small. If d2 is at least 3, then d3 is at least 4, and d4 is at least 5. The sum s n would be at most one third plus one fourth plus one fifth, which is 47 sixtieths. This is less than one. This forces d two to be two. Now, if d three is at least four, s n is at most one half plus one fourth plus one fifth, which is 19 twentieths, also less than one. So for growth, we must have d two equals two and d three equals three. Checking d4, we find that only d4 equals 4 or d4 equals 5 result in s and being greater than 1. A sequence of positive integers cannot decrease forever. It also cannot cycle with a period greater than 1, which can be shown with a prime factorization argument. And while the sequence can grow, this growth is not sustainable. The divisor patterns required for growth which correspond to divisors 2004 or 2005, are very specific and cannot persist indefinitely. Therefore, since the sequence cannot decrease forever, grow forever, or cycle, it must eventually become constant. The crucial conclusion is that any valid sequence must eventually become constant. This means from some point on, a n plus 1 equals a n. Our problem now reduces to finding these stable numbers, and any numbers that can lead to them. For a term to be equal to the next, the multiplicative factor s n must be exactly 1. This is the condition for stability. A number whose three smallest non-trivial divisors satisfy this property will generate a constant, and therefore infinite, sequence. So, the core of the problem is to find all numbers a, such that if a n equals a, then 
a and plus 1 also equals a. We will call these numbers stable. We now need to solve for the divisors d2, d3, and d4 that satisfy our stability condition. This is an example of an Egyptian fraction problem. The equation we must solve is 1 over d, 2 plus 1 over d, 3 plus 1 over d4 equals 1. Recall that d2, d3, and d4 are distinct integers greater than 1 in increasing order. By bounding d2, we can show there is only one integer solution. d2 equals 2, d3 equals 3, and d4 equals 6. We can verify this solution. 1 half plus 1 third plus 1 sixth is equal to 3 sixths plus 2 sixths plus 1 sixth, which sums to 1. This result defines the structure of any stable number a. Its three smallest divisors greater than 1 must be 2, 3, and 6. For 2, 3, and 6 to be the smallest divisors after 1, a must be divisible by both 2 and 3, but not by 4 or 5. Let's formalize this. For 2 to be the smallest prime divisor, a must be even. For 3 to be the next smallest prime divisor, a must be a multiple of 3. This means a is a multiple of 6. To ensure no smaller divisors exist, a cannot be divisible by 4 or 5. This is equivalent to saying a has the form 6 times m, where m is an integer not divisible by 2 or 5. In summary, a number a is stable if it is divisible by 6, but not divisible by 4, and not divisible by 5. This guarantees that its smallest divisors greater than 1 are precisely 2, 3, and 6. Examples of stable numbers include 6, 18, 42, and 54. For instance, 54 is 6 times 9. Since 9 is not divisible by 2 or 5, 54 is a stable number. We've characterized the stable numbers, which are possible values for a1. However, a1 could also be a number that is not stable itself, but leads to a stable number. We can find these numbers by working backwards. The first set of solutions are the stable numbers themselves. If a1 is stable, the sequence is constant from the start. The second set of solutions are numbers that become stable after one or more steps. For the sequence to be infinite and not immediately constant, it must increase. This means the factor s and must be greater than 1 for any non-stable term. If a1 becomes a stable number a at the second step, then a2, which is a1 times s1, must equal a. Rearranging this equation, we get a1 equals a divided by s1. This is our reverse engineering formula. We previously found the two cases where s1 is greater than 1. The first is when the divisors are 2, 3, and 4, giving s1 equals 13 twelfths. The second is when the divisors are 2, 3, and 5, giving s1 equals 31 thirtieths. Let's visualize the structure of all possible solutions as a directed graph. The nodes represent different types of numbers, determined by their smallest divisors. The central green node contains all stable numbers where sequences remain constant. The teal and orange nodes represent numbers that eventually lead to this stable state. A number with smallest divisors 2, 3, and 4 is multiplied by 13 over 12 to become stable. A number with divisors 2, 3, and 5 is multiplied by 31 over 30. Our entire solution strategy works by starting at the stable set and traversing these paths in reverse to find every possible starting value. Let's analyze these two possibilities for S1 to find the corresponding values of A1. First, assume the smallest divisors of A1 greater than 1 are 2, 3, and 4. Then S1 equals 13 twelfths. For A1 to be an integer, we set A1 times 13 twelfths equal to a stable number A. This gives A1 equals 12 times A divided by 13. Thus, A must be a multiple of 13. We require a to be a stable number and a multiple of 13, so we can write a as 6 times 13 times m, where m satisfies the stability conditions. 
Substituting this into our equation for A1 gives 72 times M. For A to be stable, M must not be divisible by 2 or 5. We also must verify that A1, which is 72M, has the required divisor structure. Since 72 is divisible by 4, 8, and 9, and M is odd, the smallest divisors are indeed 2, 3, and 4. Second, assume the smallest divisors of A1 are 2, 3, and 5, then S1 equals 31 thirtieths. Setting A1 times this factor equal to a stable A gives A1 equals 30A over 31. This implies A must be a multiple of 31. So we let A be 6 times 31 times M. Substituting this gives A1 equals 180M. Again, for A to be stable, M cannot be divisible by 2 or 5. We must also check A1, which is 180M. Since 180 is 2 squared times 3 squared times 5, and M os is not divisible by 2 or 5, the smallest divisors are indeed 2, 3, and 5. This case is also consistent. We can generalize this process. A starting value A1 could lead to a stable number after multiple steps. This allows us to unify all solutions into a single form. The reverse process can be iterated. We can start with a stable number and apply the reverse transformation, multiplying by 12 thirteenths or 30 thirty-firsts any number of times. This gives a general form for A1. It must be a stable number A times the factor 12 thirteenths to the power E times 30 thirty-firsts to the power J for some non-negative integers I and J. For A1 to be an integer, the stable number A must be divisible by 13 to the power I and 31 to the power J. We also know A must be stable. This means A must have the form 6 times 13 to the I times 31 to the J times M, where M is not divisible by 2 or 5. Substituting this form of A back into the equation for A1, we arrive at the general solution. A1 must be of the form 6 times 12 to the power I times 30 to the power J times M. We can now state the complete characterization of all possible values for A1. Any possible value for A1 must be of the form 6 times 12 to the power I times 30 to the power J times M. It where I and J are non-negative integers. And M is a positive integer such that the greatest common divisor of M and 10 is 1. This means M is not divisible by 2 or 5. Let's test this formula with an example. The number 54 can be written as 6 times 9. This matches our formula with I and J equal to 0 and M equal to 9. The greatest common divisor of 9 and 10 is 1, so 54 is a valid starting value. Other examples include 6 with M equal to 1, 72 with I equal to 1 and M equal to 1, and 180 with J equal to 1 and M equal to 1. All numbers generated by this formula are valid starting points. This formula provides a complete description of all possible initial values. The solution followed from analyzing the recurrence relation, which showed that any such infinite sequence must eventually become stable. By characterizing these stable points and working backwards, we were able to construct the entire set of solutions. Thank you for joining me on this mathematical journey. If you enjoyed exploring the hidden structure behind infinite sequences and proper divisors, please like this video and subscribe for more engaging math content. Until next time, keep discovering the beauty in mathematics.